Legend of War here, and today we've got a saving a disaster battle playing as Kemri, where this guy is doing a no defeat run, and he's about to get attacked at Valaya Sorrow here by two elite armies of dwarfs. If we have a look here, we can see that it does say that he has zero defeats in his campaign, so well done. I don't know if it really counts as zero defeats campaign if you have to send in a, a disaster battle, but that's whatever, it's fine. So the armies that we're going to be dealing with here, right? There's a number of things that we can do to um, get us through this situation. Now, looking at the army here, it's not great. It's not amazing. It's not terrible either. There's some good units. There's some units that aren't really going to perform well. But when we're going up against two full stacks, the odds are not in our favor. Do we have enough units in here that are actual bounce of power pushes? Now, what I mean by bounce power pushes is that are there units in the army that punch above their pay grade? Or are they punching below their pay grade? Now, against dwarfs, uh, Tomb Guard on very hard battle difficulty, which I'll showcase the difficulty here. Legendary difficulties, very hard battles. Against dwarfs, Tomb Guard will always punch down, right? So what I mean by that is that no matter what they go into melee with, they will always um, receive more damage then they will dish out, even if they go up against something like a uh, Quarreler. But the thing is, when you're outnumbered two to one, most likely their melee infantry are just going to prevent you from being able to get to the Quarrelers, right? So if you're going to use melee infantry, which as the Tomb Kings you should make use of, you know, their elite infantry, you need to make sure that the odds are in your favor to begin with. So these guys here are not going to do well in this situation. Now, because they're sending two armies, right? Uh, one army will come in to launch the attack and the other army comes in in force march, right? Now the AI only will send enough force to overwhelm you, but not by a certain degree. So if we weaken our army a little bit, we might be able to prevent the second army to show from even showing up. So what we want to do is get rid of the units that actually don't perform well in the battle in the first place and just focus on the ones that do perform well. Now we have a look at this lord here. He's nothing special. He's rank 23, whatever. He's on a Cambrian War Sphinx. But one thing that I notice is that he can actually recruit another army. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go down here and notice that there is a Treacherous Lord, which provides melee attack for Tomb Scorpions and melee defense. Now, we've got Tomb Scorpions in this army, so why don't we grab him, take this out of the settlement, put you in here, and we'll go... And... Uh, I have two armies, right? Well, two lords specifically. Yep. And let's make this guy a pretty good fighter. None of these are essential for this particular battle, so don't worry about it. We don't have a wizard. One point left. Okay, that's fine. And then we transfer the scorpions into his army, right? Then, we actually get rid of all of this. Now, bone giants are okay against dwarfs. They're okay against them, right? They do magical attacks. So obviously, that's going to be resistant a little bit by, by, um, by the dwarfs. But what we want to do here is get rid of so much of, the, of our units that only one army will be sent. Now, what I've done here is I've just left behind the best units. These are the best balance of power pushes that the Tomb Kings have to offer, especially against the Dwarfs. Armor-piercing, anti-infantry, healer as well. We've got two healers in the army now. This army here is going to be more effective against one of their armies than our previous army would have been against two of their armies. Now, there's nothing I can do about the garrison that's in here, so no big deal. And this guy here, I don't think he can attach. He doesn't have any movement. So we've made all the decisions that we really can here. We could hire some more Regiment of Renown, but um, if we hire even a single, another unit, they will send in that second army. But what I've done here is ensured that they will only bring one army. And these Tomb Scorpions are now significantly better fighters. Now, with what we've done here, we're still going to be in a difficult situation. But we have the tools that we need to win now. And the great thing is, even if they send the other army over here in Force March, they're not going to be able to launch the attack. And you should be able to win the next turn against it, because it'll be on Force March, if, if it does that. 
So here it comes. Instead of two armies coming at us, we should only have one. And there we go. Only one army. Now, so the other army that was going to come in was pretty comparable to this. And, you know, all the Tomb Guard were just going to eat shit fighting, um, you know, long beards or whatever. They're just not going to be able to handle it on very hard battle difficulty. Especially not without some massive stat boosts, which we weren't really getting. Now, Tomb Scorpion, on the other hand, these are really good units. And we've got healers in the army, so that we can do a lot with that. So let's jump in here and see what we can do. We've got two Camrian War Sphinx. Both of them are able to alternate on the healing. There's a lot that we can do here because healing is one of the most underrated things in Balance of Power. Um, it doesn't uh, take it into consideration at all. So you can use that as a way to bounce a Power Push, especially considering that these ones here, they can do so much damage to Dwarfen units but just because of their animation. Obviously, more of them would have been better. Now, as for the rest of these units here, uh, just try to keep them out of it. Can't withdraw them from the battlefield. Uh, they could potentially hide here. Just to keep them out of it. Because they don't bounce a power push. Yeah, just keep them out of it. Okay. Now, what do we need to do here to win? They've got some pretty dangerous units. What do we need to get rid of? Probably the organ guns. We could justify having the flame cannons shoot at us. Because they're probably going to hit their own troops. They don't have guns. They've got gyrocopters. I can't really do anything about that. Skyhammer. That's not a big deal. So I think what we want to do here is like rush at the organ guns. So how are we best going to do that? Well, we want to be at an angle to them to begin with. Like this. So as a vanguard deploy. Yeah, the laws is going to have to catch up. Put him in over here. And if we're like this, at least they've We've got to turn around a little bit. There's slayers in the way there, but we just make do. Okay, let's go over here. So while they're trying to get set up, if we can take out the organ guns right away, that's a big deal. I think we should try to get rid of the uh, the flame cannons because while we could get them to do friendly fire on their own troops, it's probably best <laughs> we just get rid of them because we don't want to be taking too much damage. This guy's got an armor of eternity, so he's able to regenerate a fair bit. Okay, get in there, get in there. Could use this, but it only affects one unit, so maybe pop it down on you. Never really liked that ability too much. Get in there and pop that down. Okay, keep moving, keep moving. This guy's coming in. Okay, the organ guns have been made pretty ineffective at the moment. But we are hardly out of the woods yet. I need to get my other healer over here. Yeah, the flame cannons are actually doing quite a lot of damage to their own units here is good. And our lord's getting shot up a fair bit as well, which sucks, but just got to deal with it. Main thing here is to try to keep moving, so the flame cannons just keep bombing their own units. Gotta get over here to heal specifically this guy here. He's taking tons of damage already. And all their missile units are blobbed up and not being able to use properly, and they are just, yeah, they're bombing their own units. Pop down a curse on like all of these units over here, nice big blob. And you start to see how having a few but better teamed units is way more effective than having a large army that just doesn't work as well as a team. I'll try to get these guys over here, keep moving. Try to attack your way out if you can. But yeah, always be charging. That's really important. This one here is having some troubles. Yeah, it's right in the thick of it. I am 
Okay, now since we've taken a bit of damage, it might be a good idea for us to pull out for a moment. Pull everyone out. If we can. And recover some health before going back in. Okay, that's two curses that have gone down on them now. But we've thinned them out significantly here. Main one here is just trying to get this out. But I gotta get some healing done. Okay, try to get out. Try to get out. Okay, the organ guns are actually still active, but we can get away from them. Come on, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. That's what we're gonna do here. Just get a little bit of healing. And then go back in. This isn't gonna work at this close range for whatever. Keep moving. Because, yeah, we can easily outrun dwarfs. Let's keep moving. Well, we can outrun most of their units. Obviously, their gyrocopters are going to outrun us a bit. But we've thinned them out significantly, and none of our units have died yet. So that's good. We've still got a lot of healing potential. Okay, now these guys here, run over there. If they get killed, no big deal. But let's just use them as bait. Just to draw some attention away from us here. Trying to get out of the range of the artillery. Gyrocopter's coming down to try to attack us, but that's okay. So yeah, these guys go over that way, see if we can lure some of their forces down that way for a bit. Don't be afraid in your battles, after you've made the first engagement, to pull out and, like, recollect yourself and then get back into it, because we actually gained the upper hand. Well, we, we gained um, balance of power, I suppose, in that initial fight. It's just that if we want to walk out of this with any troops remaining, we needed to come back out here, heal, so that we could do a better job in the second stage of the battle. Sometimes you get shot a little bit trying to get away though. But now we get some healing, that's something that they can't do. And also try to recover some fatigue. It would also be really good to get rid of those artillery. I reckon they did a ton of friendly fire damage though. Don't forget, the Order Resolve said decisive defeat as well. This wasn't like a close one. We really have to work hard for the battle. It's just that with this army here, it's possible. Because the thing is, if we brought uh, a variety of different troops, what ends up happening is the enemy goes wide. And we couldn't get them to like get them to bomb their own units. I would have had to just hide all the Tomb Guard here, plus, of course, the other army that was going to show up. And when dealing with dwarfs, it's always, well, sometimes quite useful to have very fast units. Not these guys are super fast, but fast units allows you to hit and run. And the dwarfs are quite bad at, at dealing with that. Okay, we've been sort of pinned down over here. These flame cannons caught up really quick. Just gotta get around. I was hoping they would send more units over here, but no big deal. But now these units here that are isolated, if we can get over to them, we could take them out quite easily. Speed that up. Now obviously if we had a full stack of cavalry of uh, tomb scorpions, this would actually be really easy, but we've only got six. Okay, I'm going to try to get over to this guy here. We should be able to absolutely smash him. Organ guns are shooting at us, but they've only got... I took out half of them. See if I can get this guy to come around and attack him. Like I said, this ability, it, it really sucks, Sandvale. It's garbage. Ok, 
Okay, good for that. And then we go for that one after we've taken this out. This one here should basically instant die as soon as we get in there. The biggest problem is going to be dealing with the Slayers, which we can deal with at the end of the battle. After the army losses has been inflicted. Assuming that's going to happen, of course. But the great thing about the army that we've got here is that every single one of these units doesn't eat shit against enemy units. And what I mean by eat shit is that if they go up against something, they don't lose balance of power. You know? That's a big problem with melee infantry in this game. Because of melee cheats, even if you have elite units, they almost always eat shit. You know? You know, as an example, let's just say you have a unit of Blackguard of Nagarond, right? I use I like to use that one as an example because that's one of the worst defenders of a unit that eats shit just about every single time. Um, so you got a unit of Blackguard of Nagarond on very hard battle difficulty, and you go up against a I don't know, let's just say a Empire Halberdier, and a Halberdier will lose against you, right? You will lose, and you think, oh, cool, my Blackguard of Nagarond won that battle, that fight. So therefore, that was a good unit. However, the Blackguard of Nagarond is actually worth more than the Halberdier unit. And the Halberdier, because of the melee cheats, will actually inflict more than its, in, like, its value in terms of damage onto the Blackguard of Nagarond. The Blackguard of Nagarond actually needs to get rid of two or three Halberdiers in order to do its value. However, because of the melee cheats, it actually can't do that. If it goes up against two halberdiers, it will lose. Therefore, it eats shit. It loses you the battle, even though it wins particular engagements. Which means that in order for melee infantry to win battles, the odds have to be in their favor in the first place. And since you're playing on legendary difficulty, you've got to assume most of the time the odds just aren't going to be in your favor. Therefore, melee infantry will almost always get you to eat shit in every single engagement. There are a few exceptions. There are some lords out there that boost melee infantry to such a ridiculous degree, such as Gorok, um, that actually makes them viable just because they'll be stupidly strong. So we've healed a fair bit here. This one here can't heal that much more. Do want to try to get around to that. But yeah, another thing is that you just got to understand the rules of the game, and a lot of people don't understand the actual rules of the game. Which is why they end up doing well in multiplayer, which is like a completely different rules. Um, and then they go into single player and get wrecked quite often. Because they just don't understand what the rules that uh, the game's playing at. It doesn't matter who's got the stronger army. That matters very little. It matters about who eats the most shit. And so what you want to do is don't fall into the trap of uh, sending bad engagements. Every single engagement that you do on single player has to be good. If you've got bad engagements, you might as well just not use the unit at all. Because the unit doesn't eat shit if it doesn't participate. Which is why you'll often see me leave like crap units in reserve. Because I just don't want them to eat shit. Might as well do nothing than do something, but uh, do a bad job of it. I take this one out. This guy here is pretty badly damaged now. But that's an extremely high bounce power unit. And if you have a look at how much damage it did, dished out, that is not its worth in value. Especially considering some of it was friendly fire as well. what it's all about here. Don't worry about them. That's all just a distraction. And the reason why almost every single missile unit in the game doesn't eat shit in pretty much every single situation is because, you know, it's able to dish out damage to the enemy without being damaged itself. And the only units that are, that are missile units that truly suck are the ones that actually don't have very much ammunition. Acceptable. 
because they just don't have that much damage potential. Whereas you take the Wood Elves, for example, why are the Wood Elves so dangerous? Because they've always got fucking tons of ammunition. So their damage potential is gigantic. I guess I can fight that there. Still got one more piece of artillery to deal with, but at least the enemy are quite exhausted now. Okay, pull away from that. That's not favorable to us. We don't want to engage in there just yet. Still heal a bit. So you can see, in terms of our Tomb Scorpions, only one unit is particularly damaged. Okay, there we go. It's almost out of ammo. If we have a look at how much it did, this one here probably did a fair bit. Eh. It did do a lot of friendly fire, though. Yeah, it's a bit difficult to dodge with these ones. It's almost out of ammo. But we should take it out so that uh, next turn that you want to deal with it, it's dead. Of course, there's always a chance it'll get you know, captured by the for the generals. Because they're, they're actually kind of weak against fire, especially this one here. Time I get to it, it'll run out of ammo. Yeah, it did. Good. The AI is starting to break down now. They're not being quite as aggressive as they were at the start, so they're making more mistakes by being a bit more passive. This is why it's important to have the battle go on for a couple of minutes before you fully commit. The AI is sort of programmed to um, sprint these battles to win within the first five minutes. After that, the AI doesn't really know what to do. It's not designed to deal with a marathon sort of battle. They just can't handle it. So they're reforming over here, leaving this one here poorly defended. Isolated units need to be targeted. So that we can nuke them real quick. out for the Slayers. Like I said, don't really want to focus on them because they're anti-large. We don't want to be eating shit, right? We want to go for favorable engagements every time, right? If we charge into them, we can disrupt them. But I just want to punch right through them to get to the missile units because they're another unit that if we go into melee with them, they're the ones that eat shit. But if we sit there getting shot by them, then we're the ones eating shit. And what I mean by eating shit is we're the one um, in an unfavorable engagement. It's I heard that term somewhere, eating shit, before, and it was really apt for what goes on in these sort of battles. And yeah, being able to heal just mitigates the amount of shit that you have to eat. <laughs> so if you ever look at the damage done by them, that is not much at all. Yeah, that unit there is eating shit. <laughs> this battle should be how to not eat shit. A Tomb King story. But I can't do that because uh, the would just get demonetized straight away. Because shit's a nah, naughty word. Okay, there's the army losses. We've won. All we're going to do now is get rid of the Slayers. Get these guys out of it because um, they've taken enough damage. God damn those Slayers, they fuck. So we want to be close enough to them so that they can provide healing. See, one of the things that makes the Tomb Scorpion so good, a lot of people like look at the stats of Tomb Scorpions and be like, oh, they you did shit. But their animation is really good because it makes them difficult to hit. Which is why these two units here took so much damage in the battle, but these ones here barely took anything. 
comparatively speaking. Alright, there we go. And then we'll just get a bit of healing in. That way, if they bring that other army up, we'll be in the best shape possible for next turn. So you might be able to just overcome it with, uh, with what we've got here. And if there's a lesson to be learned today, which there always is, which people never fucking learn, despite how, how many videos I do, if there is a lesson to be learned here, it's that it is better to run smaller, more effective armies than to just throw shit in your army and just hope it sticks. Especially if you're not going to be in favorable engagements. You know, if you're going to be cautious and make sure that every single engagement that you go into is going to be, you know, in your favor, then really build your armies however you want. But if you're going to be reckless and charge in and have two armies of dwarves attack you, then a specialized army that the dwarves just can't deal with is better than having loads of shit that they can deal with. You know, if we kept the tomb guard in the army, they would have targeted it. They would have all been annihilated, and it would have made it difficult to inflict an early army losses. Because what happened here, do you know why the early army loss happens? Is because the game adjudicates that these guys here have eaten so much shit that they're just like, right, you guys are just, you guys are just lost, right? Um, whereas if they took out the tomb guard, they'd be like, well... You've taken a lot of damage, but you've also taken out their Tomb Guard. We'll let this play out a little bit longer. You don't want that. You want them to get the army losses at the earliest possible moment so that you don't have to you know, take that much damage in the battle. You can always just run down, finish them off later. Uh, take the money. Now, the thing is, you can always just replace those units as well. But what I would highly recommend is specialize your armies as Tomb Kings. It's really important. Yeah, especially if you want to run a no-defeat campaign. Get through the rest of this turn here. And yeah, we got through it. Don't think you got any more battles to go through. Now, it's also... I, I think it's really important to make this distinction. I do bag out on melee infantry a lot. It's not that you shouldn't build melee infantry. It's just that if you're going to build melee infantry, you should be at least aware that they are going to eat shit most of the time. Like, for example, we're currently doing a, um, a Lizardman campaign as Itza. And for the majority of the campaign, I've run with Saurus Warriors. And uh, Croc uh, Gorok's army's never lost a battle. How is that if I'm going to bag out on melee infantry? It's because his army specializes in it. And I've also made sure that just about every single time he's fought something, We've been the attacker. That was really important. Plus, he's had Croak in the army. That probably makes a big difference. Right, they didn't bring that other army over here. Your army's fine. You can pursue and finish that off. Uh, we could have recruited something in the settlement. Could have get, gotten you a whole bunch of skeleton spearmen, but that's up to you. You know, if you want to run a note... Oh, there's there's the army there. I have no time for this. And luckily you can get this one over here. And this army, even if it's on Force March versus this one here at Crooked Bank Fort, should be able to win. So your no defeat campaign is still, you know, you still got a chance there to keep that going. But obviously the dwarves are a lot more powerful than you. You've got to knock down their armies. But anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed it. Appreciate you. And we'll see you next time, fuckers. Bye.